Welcome to Go Get It. Today's video session is based on LALR parser. To proceed with, I would strongly recommend to go through the video which is based on CLR parser construction because LALR parser is continuation of or it's a optimized version of CLR1 parser. So in CLR, uh, so we have seen certain problem solving uh, situations in CLR1 video session. Please go through the video session. So this is one of the problem which we solved and we have constructed the respective BFA for this given production or product grammar. So in LALR parser, we merge those states produced during the CLR construction, which contains the same LR1 items. So you can say, but the main point here is, and the distinction point here is the uh, look ahead symbols, whichever has generated during the CLR construction. So we will merge those states which has same LR1 items but, but with different look ahead symbol. So we have say for example we have I4 here and we will find but we will find, uh, we'll find for the same production or the same LR1 item in the uh, rest of the state. So we can say here that we have I7. So this state is nothing but the I7 state. So you can see that it uh, produces the third uh, production C tends to D dot with a different look at symbol. Here we have A and D and we are, here we have dollar. So according to the definition for LALR parser, we'll merge I4 and I7 that will produce or that will give you for example I47. So you can say here we have written already that I4 plus I7 that combinedly gives you I47. So I47 will have same production, I mean C tends to B dot with three different look ahead symbol A, D and dollar. So that generates the I47. So you, you would have uh, seen in the previous session that CLR1 generates a very huge table size with the number of states also generated are more in number. So practically it's impossible to maintain or uh, memory consumption is too much. So to get rid of this problem, uh, scientists have discovered the LLR parser where we will merge the states with different look ahead symbols. So similarly, we'll uh, iterate through the complete states, uh, all the states whichever is generated during the CLR con uh, parser construction. So uh, uh, to make it short, I have already written this. So we have I3 and I6 also. So you can see that where we have I3, I3 is this one. So this is I3 and this is I6. So you can see that the uh, left hand side or the productions whichever is in consideration are same in both the states but with different look ahead symbols. So again we can combine I3 and I6 to, which will generate I36. Similarly I8 and 9 we have I8 as C tends to AC dot with D and A and here we have dollar with AC dot. So I8 and 9 can be combined. So it will give you again I8 9. So finally you can say that we have totally I0 1 2, 3, 6, 4, 7, 5 and 8, 9. So total 7 states. Instead of uh, previously we had uh, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 3, 9, 1, 10. So we had two uh, total 10 states in case of CLR1 parser. And this will be the final generated uh, LLR parser. So you can see that I0 gives I1, I0 gives I2, I2 gives I5. This can be generated from the CLR parser also. The only difference being here. We have combined 4 and 7, 3 and 6, 8 and 9. So, and we can see that the uh, uh, table construction remains the same. We will follow the same logic, whatever we followed in the previous process. So, uh, moving ahead with the same problem which we solved, uh, the second problem which we solved in case of CLR parser. Again, you can see that we have already constructed the CLR parser here. And we can see that I3 and I6. So I3 is this one, S gives A dot with dollar and I6, where is I6? This one is I6, so with a closing bracket. So we can combine and we can give I36. Similarly, I2 and I5 gives I25, I79, I48. So in this way, we can reduce the number of states generated in case of LLR parser, which is uh, very much helpful uh, for the uh, uh, with the cons uh, if you consider the memory consumption and the complexity. So there are certain points to be noted here uh, which will be very, very much helpful from the exam point of view. So I would like to please uh, note it down, uh, points to ponder. Uh, so, so you will get directly questions sometimes. So we have SLR1, 
is equal to L A L R one less than or equals to C L R one. So less than or equals to or equals to don't get confused. This is all with respect to the table size we have. Similarly, second point you can note it down as L R zero equals to S L R one equals to L A L R one. Is always less than equal to C L R one. So you can notice from these two uh, derivations that C L R one table size of C L R one and C L R one in both the cases are always greater than or equals to L L R one. So there are certain cases where it can be equivalent also. And uh, so uh, this was uh, one note. I would also would like to make one more note here is that. Uh, Ah, huh. uh, so uh, what we discussed in the CLR uh, CLR one parser, we have SR conflict and RR conflict. So uh, the point to be noted in LLR cases, even though there is no RR conflict, so even though there is no RR conflict in CLR parser, there is a possibility that we will get L uh, RR uh, conflict in case of LLR parser. So it is not mandatory that. If we don't get any uh, RR conflict in case of CLR, so it should not propagate to LLR. So that's a misconception. So I hope I have made clear the LLR parser. Thanks for listening. Keep watching. Subscribe for more videos. Thanks a lot. So you can mail us your demands here at demand at gogetiit.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.